that wasn't so bad, actually. Shouldn't talk about Hi, I'm Liz Thomas from Here and Now. Um, I've been really excited and interested to hear about the test unit project and, and actually the, the work is so much in parallel with the work that we get involved is, is in as well. Where we work so closely with community and place to realise things in rapid prototyping, um, often quite dynamic ways. We engage, design and curate. And community engagement is part of our design process. It doesn't make the design weaker. It's not designed by committee. We keep hold of the strength of our sort of design interpretation, but everything that we do is about having community engagement. We call it co-design. You'll hear that more and more. And as I mentioned, prototyping. We find prototyping a really empowering and a meaningful way to test ideas, which is exactly what you guys are doing now. So hopefully some of the slides that I show you are inspiring and vice versa. Um, <coughs> and finally, what we are really keen to do is share everything that we do. And again, that's a process that you've been part of. Um, we call it curating, but that sounds a bit like we're managing or controlling something. It's not so much that, it's more just about sharing forward everything that we do to try and inspire and to try and engender. We, we, say, we like to say here is the place and now is the time and everything that we're working on is about place and people and action. So you can see how these things overlap. We engage people as part of a design process and we share that forward because now is the time to make changes in a more democratic way of realizing change in our cities. So we've developed a number of tools which we use. Just tuck them and they're long gone. <laughs> um, we had a, a, a range of tools that we use to try and work through this process. And one of them <laughs> is Whole Media. It's a website. It's a web-based platform. So if this moves on before I've said anything about it, you can go to wholemedia.co.uk. Um, like I thought, Pep Talk is um, it's a conversation. It's not just a one-off conversation. Though. What's important about a pep talk is it's in two parts. The first part is a real slow process of just face-to-face -face talks with people and local businesses, and they establish an agenda for an event which, at which we invite a whole <coughs> load of speakers. And it's about making placemaking socially engaging, not just the usual suspects. Similarly, walkabouts. We know that people interact differently when they go outside. We're landscape architects. One of the main things that I do in life is try and get people outside, not to dwell on a perceived idea of what a place is or could be, but rather to get out there and experience it and explore it together. And live design, the last few tools have been quite focused on engagement, but we are, all, we are designers and uh, we like to bring people, everyone's a designer, um, we like to get people, school children building models out in spaces, um, designing things together. I'd like to tell you about a few projects just to give you a snapshot of how we start to apply some of these tools. And Homey Deer is the first one. It was last year in the Rodney Street Tunnel. You can see people um, are listening to speakers and there was a, an artist live painting there. And it's coming back to that idea of making it socially engaging, more than just consultation or engagement. Uh, the, Result of that, that was a pep talk. The result of the pep talk was to t transform this place into something that is a vibrant and creative community asset. And uh, this was a month long pop up exhibition which uh, members from the local community and a wider community of interest as part of the CityLink Festival came together to co design and build. Um, and it was great, it was a great process to try, well not to try, but we really did challenge Edinburgh City Council, who can be uh, conservative. Um, another project, we, we enjoyed that, we thought we'll do one of these every year. Something that's completely self-initiated, it's not coming from any policy or agenda, well it comes from policy, but it's got an agenda that's driven by the community. And at Meanwhile Fountain Bridge, again in Edinburgh, the community got in touch with us wanting to do something that celebrates a year of, uh, no, five years, uh, but this is their last year on site. So we got together and we heard from the local community what they wanted to see um, that would capture and celebrate what they've done um, at Meanwhile Fountain Bridge. They, we did walkabouts, we did live design, and they had a, people had a month, students and just members of the public had a month to come up with ideas and gather materials to build seats. 
and they were to go between the Harris fences. So um, EDI had said, you can have this site, but everything you do has to be within the Harris fences. We were like, no, put it out into the public space. So um, at our event, um, which was just a five hour hack on the site, we built 11 benches. And the idea with these was just to have something that people are invited to use. They can move them around. If they went walking, it doesn't matter. But you preach into the converted here. You know that people, things that people have made don't go walking because there's a sense of involvement and ownership. The Wasteland Collective was something, um, it was a group of people that wanted to explore what wastelands are and how we term and define them and say that it's not just a vacant site that you guys are working on at the moment or, or a derelict site, but it's so much more than that. It's all the underused spaces. So the Wasteland Collective was a year-long sort of collaborative project that brought together artists, landscape architects, architects and designers. And we wanted to share with people or to really challenge people to think about what wastelands are and how broad that definition could actually be. Um, so through a series of posters, but also exhibitions, we were trying to get people to, um, to not just accept. Again, this is from an Edinburgh context, and it might sort of seem strange speaking in Glasgow because we sort of, in Edinburgh, think we're really okay, actually, thank you very much. And sort of this project was about challenging people to think, well, actually, that's, that could be so much more. It could, be so, it could offer more for well-being for people. And we didn't just make exhibitions, but we made some, um, just some really simple design projects, building things again. I've got a bit of an obsession with sitting down outside. I just think that if you offer people a space to sit, they will. And um, we made these seats and just, it, it showed how you can bring places to life just by co-design processes. 